everybody. Good morning. My name is Tom Rigsby, your host for yet another installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. If you haven't done so already, grab yourself a good cup of coffee. <clears throat> As I did yesterday, apparently I'm going to have to cough and clear my throat. So I might as well have a little coffee to wash it down. I think what it is, is that something's changing in the air. You know, we get all those little things that make us cough and blow our nose and that sort of thing. I think that's what it is. I actually, when I was uh, stopped by the hospital the other day to get, you know, wired up like a cheap stereo, and uh, and the lady that was helping me out with that, she had the sniffles thing going on too. So whatever it is, I hope it's in, it, it passes and that it's not causing you a lot of stress today. Um... So, when, when you join, <laughs> that kind of threw me off. i got to get my pattern going back here. When you join, please leave a comment. Let me know that you are here. Love to know that you're here. And I'll let Facebook know you're interested in the conversation that's going on. If you are listening on your podcast catcher, you can watch the show live every morning, 7 a.m. Central Time on Facebook. Just go to TomRigsby.com slash Facebook. And if you can't catch the show live every morning and you'd rather listen to it in your podcatcher, just look it up. It's in iTunes, Stitcher, Streaker, Spreaker, Streaker, <laughs> and, uh, and tune in. So this week we've been talking about relationships. We're going to, we're going to continue that this morning and take, I got a good question for you. We'll ask a good question about that and uh, see where that goes. Before we do that, I got to say a couple of good mornings and shout outs to folks. Uh, Joe, good morning. As always, good to see you here. You gonna be at the coffee shop this morning? Jeremy, good morning. We had some, uh, Jeremy allowed us to spotlight him and, uh, and do some great work on his, on his introduction, his pitch yesterday. George, hey, good to see you, Vicky. Uh, always a pleasure to have all of you folks join me. So, Here's the question today. Let me get back over here so I can make sure I ask the question correctly. When we think about relationships, some of the, the conversation we've had going on so far this week have been about relationships and how they, they help us achieve something. So here's the question. Are relationships the result? Or do they move you toward another result? In other words, do you establish, maintain, work on these relationships because that is the goal? Or do you work on these relationships because you get something else out of them? Now, we can probably, um, we can probably come to the conclusion without a lot of work that, oh, well, yes, we should definitely have relationships without any expectations. But is that true? I mean, just think about it for just a minute. Think about your Rolodex, right? And how many of those people, you, you can probably go through your Rolodex right now and say, personal relationship, business relationship. What's the difference? I mean, really, think about that for just a minute. Why would you categorize them in two different categories? All right? Maybe one, maybe in the, in, the, in the personal relationship category, you're willing to be a bit more transparent. You're willing to be a bit more open about the things that, that matter to you, that matter to you away from work. But, and then you keep those business relationships professional. Do you invest less in the business relationships than you do in the personal relationships? Why? Why would you do that? So do, do you care any less about those people? And that, I think, really is kind of the root question. If you care less about them, what's the value of the relationship? That's, uh, yeah. George says, what's a Rolodex? Oh, man. I know you know what a Rolodex is, George. I know you know. <laughs> Given I'm tipping my hand at how long I've been doing this. All right, here you go. If you go through your contacts on your phone instead of your Rolodex. Joe says the best relationships are multifaceted and each tier can be developed 
at a different rate and depth. I agree with that. And even, even if you think about your personal relationships, right? I might know my second cousin once removed, but that doesn't mean that we have a close personal relationship. It's because I know who they are. That's just not, you know, somebody um, that you, in that example, that's not somebody I invest a lot of time in. I actually do know my second cousin once removed, and we do have a good relationship. So, um, there, uh, I think it's Metcalf's law, and Joe or George might know this, but Metcalf, uh, Metcalf's law says we can only maintain a close personal relationship with 150 people or less. And actually, if you think about it, that's a giant number to think about having a close personal relationship with. And if you talk to just one of those people every day, you'd only talk to somebody a maximum of three times a year. Oh, that number just seems so big. But but his law is based on the idea that um, our mind can only handle that many first-order relationships. And we can have the second-order relationships. Think about LinkedIn and how you've got you know, your first-order connections, then the second-order, then the third-order. He's suggesting that we can only have 150 of those first-order relationships. And, and those relationships span both personal and professional. So my question for you today, and this really is kind of what I'm poking at, is if you treat them differently, why do you treat them differently? Do you have different expectations? And if you have different expectations, are you projecting those different expectations on those business relationships? Do they, do they think that you consider them just a transaction? All right. Best relate, yep, okay, George, let's see, and George, yep, professional, all right, Brooke, yes, a relationship is a relationship. I know a bunch of people that won't add professional contacts to Facebook, but will LinkedIn. I've always thought that was silly. So, so some of the tools around today, that's a, a really good point, Brooke. Some of the tools, like specifically Facebook and LinkedIn, are really blurring that line, right, and and it was much easier. <laughs> so one of the things that I found about doing these videos every morning is that people come find me. <laughs> so all those people that I wanted to connect with um, but then tried to keep separate between Facebook and actually even within Facebook, there's my Facebook personal page and my Facebook business pages and then there's LinkedIn and trying to keep all those separate I yeah, personally, I gave up on that a long time ago, and I think you know. So I, I'm going to make a blanket statement here, which is always dangerous, right? If you're trying to keep those two things separate, then that means you're trying to maintain that division between your personal persona and your work persona, and and so that means you're two different people. So. Consistency is one of the things, you know, people do business with other people that they know, like, and trust, right? And consistency is one of those keys. If they see you, we give this advice to millennials all the time. Oh, don't put pictures of your red solo cup on Facebook. You know, no employer will hire you. But we'll do stupid stuff and put it on our Facebook because oh, our business contact's not going to see that. I keep them separate. I... For me, personally, that's just too much work. I'm, I won't say that I will friend anybody that makes a request, but just about anybody. I have to know who you are. Um, and if I don't, then I find out. I go research. I go look at your profile, look at your website, see if you're somebody that I can add value to. Right? There, there are a lot of people that just add you for spammy reasons. Joe says, oh, I love this, Joe. In today's environment, it's best to integrate the grind. You are who you are. Yep, that's a fact. And the more you try to put on, I mean, you've heard the saying, you know, maintaining a lie is exhausting. If you're maintaining this, this public persona, this professional persona, and it's different than your personal, which one of those is really you? That's a good question for you. 
So Joe's, Joe also says, boy, Joe's just on a roll this morning. By selecting the proper 150 relationships can lead to an influential sphere that is almost unimaginable. Yes, it is large. It is, when you think about it, you know, a, a big number. But boy, you can really get some connections in there that have a real impact. So my tip for you and how to do that in Facebook and in LinkedIn, I've got little groups that I put people in. <laughs> Uh, typically I'll put them in a group based on where or how I met them. Uh, and then I've got another group called my 150. And if you're in, you know, if you're in that group of 150, that, that kind of helps me focus. I know that's exclusionary. Discriminatory. Yeah, I guess I'm discriminating against the people that are not in the 150, but that's, I mean, that's the tool that I use, and that's how I uh, help keep up with it. Joe, George says he's old school. I guess that means you're trying to keep things separate. I personally, George, I think, uh, I'm going to talk about this. You can come to the coffee shop, and I'll tell you what I think. But I think you have a great opportunity if you bridge both of those. Just saying. Those are my thoughts. All right. Anyway, that's it for today. We're, uh, man seriously have to consider changing the name of this show. I can't keep it to seven minutes to save my life. I hope that uh, our conversation this week about relationships has given you, if nothing else, has given you some food for thought. Um, we, we have a real tendency sometimes, I think, to not consider our customers' relationships. And there's a really simple trap that we can fall into where they become transactions. We don't even bother to know their name. I mean, think about it from your perspective. We were talking about this earlier this week. How awesome is it to go into some retail establishment? Well, I mean, it could be a shop, a hotel, a restaurant, whatever, and they remember your name. Now, why they're doing that is irrelevant. Just how awesome is it that they do it? It makes you feel special, right? It will make your customer feel special, too. Do that. Think about that. Uh, um, not Napoleon Hill. Win friends and influence people. Who was that? Somebody give me that real quick. Anyway, he said, There is no sweeter sound to the human ear than the sound of one's own name. Come on, somebody's got to know who wrote that. How to win friends and influence people. By now you could look it up on the internet. Anyway, use people's names. I, I try to do that uh, when we're at a restaurant or something. They, You know how they come up, hey, my name's Tom, I'll be your server, I'll be taking care of you tonight. Seven plus minutes in the morning, yeah. Uh, George, I don't think it was Zig Ziglar. See, now you're going to have to make me call on Siri. Watch this. Who wrote How to Win Friends and Influence People? Look. Worthless. All right. There we go. Nah, anyway. Um, so when the, the server comes to the table, hey, I'm Tom. I'll be your server tonight. Hey, Tom, how are you? And I can't tell you how many times I've gone up to the camp. This happened Sunday night. We went out to dinner. And uh, the, the person taking our order said... Um, Hey, welcome to so-and-so. How you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm doing pretty good. How are you? He's like, oh, well, well, I'm doing fantastic. Well, that's good. You have a good day today? Has it been busy? Short little things, right? People are human. They want to do business. People want to do business with other people. Forget the no like, and trust. Other people. Just be a human being. That's all you have to do. All right. If this content has helped you out, I would appreciate if you would like the video, like the page, and uh, be sure to follow so you get those notifications also. And if you know somebody else that could benefit from this, this uh, our conversations every morning, be sure and tag them in a comment. It'll show up in their feed. They can come over and watch the video, and uh, they will appreciate you thinking of them person to person uh, and sharing this value with them. Wait. Oh, Eric's messing with me. He logged in as me. 
All right, that's it for today. Coffee shop show at 9 o'clock today. Eric and I will be live at the coffee shop at the same time. That's the first time in a while. So if you're in Huntsville, if you have the opportunity, drop by and see us. We would love for you to come by. It's uh, Old Town Coffee on Pratt right off of Five Points. We'll be there a little bit before 9. Come on by, say hi, and join in our conversation. That gives us a live cafe audience. Otherwise, we'll be back here again in the morning with another brand new installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. I'll talk to you then. I'll talk to you in the coffee shop show. Talk to you in the comments. You have a great Wednesday. See you tomorrow.